Okay, it is 4.30 and I want to call together this uh, meeting of the uh, City of Tullahoma Regional Planning Commission. Um, and as I look around, we have four um, officers here, so therefore we have enough to hold business and have a quorum. So um, before we begin, I'd like to go ahead and recognize tonight is the last night that Scott Gregory will be on our board. I hate to say that because I've trusted and relied on him for a lot of things in this last year. Um, we appreciate your time, your effort. He served seven years on this board and given this city seven years of time and uh, we appreciate that. Uh, and so we want to recognize him tonight and, and say thank you very much for that, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And now I'll ask you all to rise for the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. If you will, please, let us pray. Dear God in heaven, as we come before you tonight as a board and as a city, uh, we seek to do that which is right in this city and good for this city and the things that will bless the city and help it to be stronger and better than it is today. We seek your help, your wisdom, and your guidance in everything that we do. And we ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, board, if you will take a look on pages two through four, uh, we will read and approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve. Motion and second to approve the minutes as printed on pages two to four in the packet. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The minutes stand approved as printed. Uh, reports of officers and staff, Lee. Uh, we have a consultant group. Uh, we've uh, got a grant from TDOT to uh, do a community mobility plan. Uh, they're from Gresham Smith, and I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Drew Gaskin. Thanks, Lee. Um, I also have John Houghton with me uh, from Gresham Smith as well. I uh, just wanted to give a quick overview of the draft uh, final report that we submitted last week. I see that hard copies have been distributed. Um, and, and I apologize for our throwback font that we have here. It looks like we've got a, a newer font that's not recognized, but it should be interesting to see how it looks. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so today I just wanted to give a quick overview of the project, um, give a quick recap of our analysis of existing conditions and future needs. Um, a quick recap of community goals and objectives that we discussed in the public workshops. Uh, go over our recommendations quickly. Uh, briefly discuss the prioritization tool that we'll be submitting with the final draft of the report and then just touch on next steps quickly. Next slide. Project overview. Uh, so for those of you, uh, as most of you may know, this was funded through a TDOT Community Transportation Planning Grant. And we actually have Andrea Noel here from TDOT. And I'll just let her address that real quick. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you. Um, my name is Andrea Noel. I'm with the Department of Transportation. Um, I'm based in Chattanooga, so you're in Region 2 as far as we're concerned. Um, this is a pet competitive grant. Uh, we just started it about four years ago to help communities with their transportation needs. Um, this past year in 2019, we were able to give out 22 grants for over $1.5 million worth of grants. 
Um, TDOT funds 80% of that, and then the cities usually fund the other 20%. But because you had a um, co-grant with M Manchester, um, then you guys split that with um, Manchester with 10% of the grant, which normally these grants are pretty expensive. But um, we really appreciate you guys um, having the thought to apply for the grant and letting us come into your community. And we thank Gresham Smith for great work on this plan for you all, and thank you very much. And we thank TDOT very much for allowing us to be involved. Um, the, the last section up here, uh, the last bullet, just comes from the application. And uh, our charge was to produce a planning document that takes a holistic view of the mobility needs of both communities. So the uh, presentation tonight is going to focus, uh, going to look at it through a Tullahoma centric lens, but we've looked at everything holistically for both communities. Uh, we were charged with focusing on five corridors, so US 41, US 41A, State Route 55, uh, that includes uh, Wilson Avenue and Tullahoma as well. Uh, these were the five focus corridors that we looked at. Uh, we did take, as you'll see, a network-based approach, uh, just because those corridors don't exist in a vacuum, but those were the primary areas of focus. Um, you know, we had three phases of the project we've been working on since January. Uh, the first phase, we capped off with a round of public workshops in May. Uh, the one here we held at the D.W. Wilson Center had great attendance, great participation. Uh, over the summer, we've been working on roadway, uh, bicycle pedestrian, uh, and land use recommendations. Uh, we presented those at a final workshop back in August at uh, the uh, annex, uh, uh, the Coffee County Annex. And then right here, we're on the penultimate step. Uh, the final presentation, we'll take any comments we get from this body, uh, the lo uh, local officials, and uh, roll them into the final master plan. Uh, so just to recap uh, the existing conditions and uh, look at existing condition conditions and future needs, first thing we looked at was corridor traffic analysis. Uh, looked at existing and planned roadway facilities, specifically uh, the ones from the last 2013 uh, plan update. Uh, traffic growth project projections, uh, traffic analysis or crash analysis, and also at the level of service. Um, the table on your right there shows the outcome of the uh, level of service analysis. Um, the big takeaway from that is if you include all of the projects in the 2013 transportation plan, you really have pretty acceptable uh, level of serv service both now and in the future. So with the suite of improvements uh, that you all identified in your 2013 plan, you're actually in pretty good shape on a lot of these corridors going forward. Next slide, please. Uh, we also did a bicycle pedestrian analysis, uh, same deal. We looked at the recommendations from the 2013 plan. Uh, we also did a demand analysis, which is the map you see on the right. Uh, the darker colors show where you would expect to see higher uh, demand for uh, bicycling and walking if there were good facilities. Uh, those are places your schools, parks, commercial areas, etc. cetera. Uh, we also did a bicycle pedestrian crash analysis, as well as a level of traffic stress analysis, which is on the next slide. Um, I know these are a little small, but on the, on the left is our bicycle uh, LTS, level traffic stress analysis. On the right is pedestrian. The difference that you can probably see pretty easily is that on the bike one, there's a lot of green. On the uh, ped one, there's a lot of red. So on the bicycle, what we see are local neighborhood streets that are generally pretty comfortable for users of all ages and abilities to bike on now, maybe with just a little bit of improvement. Uh, our main corridors, though, are relatively dangerous. Uh, certainly not comfortable for the average user and act as barriers uh, to getting across town. Um, the sidewalks are really tied to whether or not there are sidewalks present. Uh, you can see a little bit of green around the downtown area where we do have pretty good sidewalk coverage, but other than that, I think it underscores the need for uh, an expanded pedestrian network. Uh, and just to rehash the key findings on the corridor traffic analysis, generally on the corridors we have pretty acceptable level of service now and in the future, including the 2013 roadway projects, so in pretty good shape there. Uh, in terms of crash hot spots, we looked at two specifically that uh, not, not just had a high volume of crashes, but also fairly severe <coughs> crashes, so resulted in injuries. Uh, US 41A North Jackson Avenue at North Washington Street, which we heard about, uh, both public workshops, and also North Jackson kind of near the golf club lane area. There was a, a good cluster of crashes too, so we wanted to keep our eyes on those. Uh, and then bicycle pedestrian analysis, uh, the bike head demand that we looked at, it's highest near downtown and kind of radiates away from downtown uh, with less intense zones of demand. Uh, so definitely uh, the for that network is, is right where we are downtown. Um, in terms of crash hot spots for uh, bicycle pedestrian crashes, uh, North Jackson between Jack Farrar Lane and West Grundy Street came up. 
uh, and then level of traffic stress, uh, just like I said before, um, need to do some work in terms of expanding the pedestrian network and also uh, safer bicycle facilities on major corridors. Uh, community goals and objectives. Uh, this summarizes some of the feedback that we got at the first round of public workshops. I know that the table might be a little difficult to read, but we asked uh, the public what were the community goals that were most important. Um, the one that came in top was focusing walking and biking connections on local streets between neighborhoods. Um, the, the second was uh, emphasizing walking and biking improvements on major streets. And it, uh, coming in third was just targeting all transportation improvements, including roadway in areas experiencing residential and commercial growth. Uh, we also asked folks just what type of improvements they'd like to see, just a, a simple visual preference survey. Um, not a lot of surprise here, but people wanted expanded sidewalks. Uh, they wanted to see bike lanes with some separation from traffic uh, to enhance user comfort, and that included separated bike lanes, side paths, and greenways. Uh, they also uh, were interested in, in potential development strategies like mixed-use development to uh, reinforce walkable centers and access management too, just uh, managing driveway access so there, aren't any, so there aren't so many curb cuts. Next slide, please. Um, and finally, we asked at the public meetings, just at the public meetings and in an online interactive mapping tool to just let us know what they thought, uh, what type of facility improvement they wanted and where. Uh, and this summarizes it. I know it's a little difficult to see, but uh, the red are uh, sidewalk improvements, and the blue and uh, purple are uh, bike lanes and uh, some capacity uh, suggestions, and then intersection uh, and crossing suggestions as well. So that leads us to the recommendations. Next slide. Uh, the roadway project recommendations uh, is what we have here, uh, you see on the map. Uh, these are uh, pretty much carried forward from the 2013 plan based on our level of service and safety analysis. Uh, they tend to come in and address the areas that we've seen problems, so we really just wanted to give a thumbs up to uh, the 2013 recommendations and keep these in mind as Tullahoma goes forward to update their transportation plan in the future. Uh, it's 10 total projects. It includes nine miles of new or improved roadway, and that includes uh, the new roadway, the uh, State Route 138 Cedar Lane connector, uh, and the total estimated cost is 23 million for those improvements. Uh, uh, the bikeway network plan, just to get everybody uh, on this, using the same vocabulary, these are the types of uh, facility types that we use. Uh, different plans use different ones, but uh, paved shoulder and buffer, uh, paved shoulder and bike lane are things that we would expect to see in a more rural area. Uh, buffered and protected or separated bike lane are things in higher volume, uh, higher speed areas. And then bike boulevard are neighborhood connections and then we're sure you path and side path or greenway or side path connections. Uh, and this is that network. So um, uh, really the highlights of it, uh, along North Jackson uh, and Lincoln, we've got some uh, buffered and separated bike lane recommendations, um, as well as uh, buffered separated bike lanes along major corridors like Cedar Lane which is one that we heard a ton about. Um, as you get away from the uh, more developed part of town, we transition to bike lanes and paved shoulders. Um, and, and really, I think the highlight of this is a, an expansion of the city's existing greenway system, uh, particularly uh, around the east side, east southeast side of the city, um, really building off of the existing greenway that you have now. Um, and, and certainly in our final public workshop, we, we heard a lot of support uh, for doing that as well. Uh, so it's two miles bike boulevard, uh, 18 miles of buffered separated bike lanes, about 23 miles of bike lanes paved shoulders, and about 26 miles of greenways or side paths. And a lot of these are projects that won't necessarily be implemented in a vacuum. A lot of them, uh, like Cedar Lane, for example, uh, are gonna be included as part of uh, scheduled and programmed road roadway improvements. Next slide. Uh, pedestrian network plan, uh, really the, the big thing here still is uh, that greenway extension um, around the perimeter of the city. Uh, within the city, we really focused on two things, and that was uh, closing the gaps in the existing network, and also making sure that we had uh, good pedestrian connections to uh, schools, which was one thing that we heard uh, time and again, both public workshops uh, and online. So it's six total miles of new sidewalks, but a lot of those are really uh, targeted uh, investments. Uh, and we also had 18 intersection improvements as well. Uh, that were identified almost entirely uh, by the public, uh, either in person or in our online map. Uh, and those consist of really just uh, state of the practice of pedestrian crossing uh, improvements, crosswalks, uh, pedestrian activated signals, things like that. And the next slide actually shows a couple of examples of that. And I know this is a little difficult to see because it's black and white. The one on the left 
is a crossing uh, that came up constantly and it's uh, Tullahoma High School, that north access point there at US 41. Um, we've got uh, a crosswalk possibly with some high visibility pedestrian, treatment, pedestrian treatments like a, uh, a potentially a pedestrian activated uh, warning light or even signal potentially. Uh, and then on the right, um, it, uh, you've got uh, State Route 55 and US 41. And again, this is just uh, putting in crosswalks uh, that are up to uh, national best practices. And again, those are just examples of uh, implementation. And uh, you can probably see those a little bit better in the hard copy of the report. Uh, finally, to tie them all together, we, uh, the transportation and land use, uh, we did a quick development form concept. Uh, this uh, particular example is from US 41A and West Grizzard Street. So here you see the existing uh, profile of the street. Um, you know, it's, it's North Jackson, so it's five lanes with a, or four lanes with a turn lane in the middle. And what we wanted to emphasize with this was the flexibility inherent uh, in some of the uh, recommendations. So the next slide shows really two different ways that this could look. Um, the top one is uh, with buffered bike lanes. So that's where you have a buffered bike lane on each side of the street. Uh, with uh, a landscaped median down the middle uh, for uh, access management. Um, alternatively, uh, you could do a separated bike lane on one side of the street that's bi-directional. So again, uh, working with uh, your constituents, landowners, TDOT, everybody, you know, come up with an implementation strategy that's really gonna work for that specific location. And again, that's just an example of what it can look like. Um, finally, uh, with the final report, we're going to be submitting a, a really a living prioritization tool. Um, so we developed the network plans based on all the things that we discussed earlier. Um, the recommended improvements, we applied some prioritization criteria based on safety and demand. Uh, safety is crash history, network gaps and traffic volumes, and demand are uh, access or proximity to schools, parks, uh, commercial centers or commercial uh, areas and areas of relatively high population density. Uh, and what you can do with this is actually create a schedule of improvements and, and we'll submit a preliminary schedule of improvements with it. Uh, but you can also change the weighting for varying local priorities. So for example, uh, TDOT may have safety funding or safe routes to school. And you can uh, say, well, safety needs to be the highest priority of your schools and change it and see what rises to the top. So it's something that can be used dynamically as you go forward. Uh, and ultimately that's gonna aid in the project development part of implementation. So the next slide shows just with sidewalks. This is just an example. Uh, we took uh, all things being equal, all the weights being equal, and took the, the top five uh, sidewalk projects. And what we had was East Grundy Street between College and Birch Alley, all of Cedar Lane basically, uh, Cedar Lane between uh, State Route 55, uh, going all the way over to West Lincoln, uh, and then South Anderson Street between, uh, really right at the existing sidewalks at Lauderdale and, and State Route 55. That one, interestingly, the, the city just uh, submitted a tap grant on. Um, but this is just an example of uh, what you can do with the uh, tool. So we'll provide the tool, an initial ranking, and a user guide so uh, Lee and company can, can use it uh, going forward. Finally, next steps, uh, like our earlier slideshow, we're really close to the end here. Uh, this is a draft plan, so uh, we are still entertaining comments, and still making tweaks, uh, but uh, once we receive those, We'll finalize and submit the plan and the uh, prioritization tool as well. Uh, so thank you, and I'll take any questions that anyone has. Yes, sir. I have a comment. First, I'd like to compliment you on your work. Uh, I think you've done an outstanding job of, of pulling together a very comprehensive plan that has a really, lot of really good features, and in particular from a quality of life standpoint. The one comment that I have, though, is I don't really see anything that improves connectivity at Interstate 24. And uh, I see that as being a major problem in the economic development okay. of, of Tullahoma. In particular, we have an industrial park uh, halfway between Tullahoma and Manchester, the right. joint park. And one of the, uh, the real drawbacks to marketing that property has been connectivity to the interstate there. Turns out there are about five traffic lights and about uh, three, uh, exactly three school zones to go through in order to get to the interstate. Right. That same thing is true of uh, people living in Tullahoma and trying to get to the interstate to go to either Nashville or Chattanooga or Murfreesboro. They have to, to go through, through there and uh, there's, I don't see anything in the Manchester plan to, uh, to help alleviate that. There's uh, also a problem, I think, with the Northwest northeast 
uh, quadrant of the city and not having uh, connectivity to 55 and therefore connectivity to the interstate. There's, uh, for example, uh, Country Club Drive, Short Springs Road, and on out to Riley Creek Road, uh, Loca Road. Those, those areas do not have a way to cut across very well and get to uh, 55 and thereby get to the interstate. And those, those are two deficiencies that, that I would like to see addressed. Okay. Otherwise, I think you've got a lot of really good features in the plan, and I compliment you on your work. Well, thank you for that, and thanks for the uh, comment, too. We'll get uh, stuff to finalize it, so we'll take another look at that comment. Yes, sir. And uh, following up on Commissioner Comer's comments about accessibility of the interstate, today, uh, many people use the route along Riley Creek Road and Smith Chapel Road, a very, very dangerous route to take it, particularly in the evening or night. And that's a safety issue that I think that your <coughs> transportation and mobility plan is lacking unless you take safety as a major priority to eliminate that issue. And it ties together specifically with access to the interstate and the, as Commissioner Comer has mentioned about getting access to 55 or on to the interstate. So I'd appreciate this is not the first time that I specifically have raised this issue. It's not been addressed yet. I would certainly appreciate it if it could be addressed. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Are we looking for any? Uh, no, I mean, this was the first draft. Okay. Uh, he did a presentation. Uh, yeah. You got hard copies for your consumption, and then any uh, comments, uh, recommendations that you might have, I uh, inform them to me. I will get them to the consultant. Uh, okay. They'll do a f uh, finalizing the, the final draft. We'll see if we can get a hard copy online for the public to see as well too and get comments from idea. them as well. That's a good idea. Are we doing another um, one of those meetings where people can come in and drop by and look at it again or no? Yeah. Okay. I will say uh, because I was at both the meetings here in town and the, uh, at D.W. Wilson and the one in uh, Manchester and um, the time and the effort and the work and everything that went into into that and the analysis that comes out of it is very impressive. I'm very pleased with that work. Did you feel like we had enough turnout to get to get feedback from people at those meetings? Uh, you know, the turnout varied a little bit, but um, I, I think the big takeaway was that the people that came came ready with yeah. with really good suggestions. Um, and you know, uh, there may be some additional suggestions that we need to take a lot of look at. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got great feedback, both in person and online. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. In the any other reports from officers and staff, Lee? Okay. Then we begin to look at old business. And uh, first thing on the agenda in old business, item A, the police station revised site plan. The site plan for the city police department, um, 10,932 square foot building at 213 West Grundy Street. I, I was going to let you know one thing. It was a, uh, that's actually a courtyard. The building actually kind of slopes down here that's a courtyard outlined up there so okay that's not the entire building it's just and he's going to show you a are both of those segments that are white uh, courtyard that is this is the building yeah right yeah. 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 and then that's going to be the, the open space area in the plaza yes this is the plaza area it also encompassing these paving strips okay so the, the building outline really stops right there. Okay. I know you have the site plan, but there's a rendering here that may help show the area of the building. Um, and then uh, we also have some 
angle of the plaza area. Would you like to put them up here yeah. so the public so can see, see them? We did have an open house for interested members of the public earlier this afternoon, so uh, quite a few people came by and looked and asked questions and became more familiar with the planned building. And um, yeah, I was going to comment that the building the footprint has changed from the original uh, plan that was uh, approved last uh, well, almost about a year ago, but last November. Put the next. This was the uh, that was the site and the and the uh, site plan that was approved last year. Go back. To the You'll see that the, the building is uh, has reduced in size, but the scope of the project has expanded to include the parking areas, uh, you know, along the alley behind uh, City Hall to improve the, the drainage, and I believe it's to improve the topography at the and level it out. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. It's currently zoned uh, C1. Uh, staff gives it a favorable recommendation. It should be an, uh, definitely an upgrade in that area as far as parking and the new facility. It shows the zoning of all three properties. The aerial. Yeah, and that's the aerial. And C1 is consistent with the use that we would be using? Yes, uh, institutional or any government uses are allowed in C1. All right. They have to exceed all the development standards of designing orders. Do I have any uh, motion from the council on this? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to vote to. Are we sending a favorable recommendation? Or no, we, we're we're approving? Okay. Because some were favorable recommendation. Okay, so I have a motion and second to approve the site plan as presented. Mm -hmm. The revised site plan, I should say, as presented uh, on pages. Page 10 or no? Eight. Page 8 through 16. Huh? Always the maps are on. Maps are on all the way back to 16. Okay. All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The approval is given. Thank you. Uh, the next old business is Town Homes at uh, 1008 West Lincoln Street. A request to allow a planned unit development with 12, uh, 13, excuse me, Town Homes house units on a 3.1 acre lot at 108 West Lincoln Street. This begins on page 17. And carries through to page twenty six. Is it twenty six? Yes. That's all in there. Yeah. Twenty six. Oh, I think we're thirty. No, we're thirty. Twenty seven. Twenty eight. Thirty. 29, up to page 29. Yep. No, 29 and 30 is even part of it. Okay. So, this is to be, oh, this is not a public hearing. You can, uh, the State Commission can hold a public hearing on any item on the agenda as long as it was put on the public notice, and this item was put on the public notice. Very well then, we shall open a public hearing on this issue. 
Okay. Before we begin, I will explain the rules of the, of the public hearing. This is a public hearing for the, for the public of Tullahoma to be able to speak and address this body about this issue. And this issue alone, okay? First of all, you will be allowed two minutes to speak. When you approach the platform, state your name and your address so we know where you're from. <coughs> and you'll be allowed two minutes. If you have others that are with you who wish to speak, they also have two minutes and they may choose to delegate those minutes to you, but to do so, they must come forward, give their name and their address so that we know that they're also from the city of Tullahoma and, and have the right to speak on this issue. Is there anyone who does not understand the rules of this? Very well then, I open this public hearing uh, on this subject. Um, who is the representative for the pre people that are applying? Lou Lockhart and Eric Birch on behalf of Mr. Dan who's applying. Okay. I'll just give a quick rundown of the project. Thank you. And it's 13 units. Uh, it's uh, townhome style apartments. Uh, it's located at, on West uh, Lincoln. It's zoned to R1, but uh, plan unit developments are permissible in uh, R1 district. Uh, we heard it last month on the, on the 21st of October. Oh, excuse, excuse me, back in September. And we carried it over for today. Uh, there was two conditions that were put on there when it was postponed last meeting, and that was one, that uh, the neighbors were notified with a letter, which they were, and that there was a plan that would be submitted uh, on the open space, how it would be developed, how it would be maintained. Uh, staff has not received that, that plan on, on the open space, uh, so our recommendation is to postpone it until we can get a, a plan to review. Considering that not all of the requirements of a PUD um, have been met per the, the ordinances here in Tullahoma, uh, it would seem that it would be appropriate to uh, postpone the vote until the next planning meeting and until uh, Mr. Denby can reply as to his plans for this in writing. If I may, Mr. Chairman, and Absolutely. Representative of Mr. Denby, um, the Planning Commission was here last month. Uh, they met with the Technical Review Committee. I believe everything was approved and put before this board. Um, it was, uh, for whatever reason, more public notice than was required to ask for, and the, the letters were um, sent out, and there was a question that came up uh, in front of the committee about what the open space was going to be and how it was going to be used. Um, and I think, I don't know if it's articulated then or not, it's, it's going to be open space and it's going to be, um, we have a surveyor and engineer here to answer any technical questions, but the plan will be submitted to the mayor of Board and Alderman. Um, it was not a requirement, as my understanding, it was not a requirement whenever it was approved by the Technical Review Committee. It's met all of the requirements other than this committee asking what it was going to be used for. Um, and I can tell you, and, and we have the, the engineer, like I said, the surveyor here, and Mr. Denby, it's just going to be an open area. And it's not going to be developed in any way. It's just going to be there. So um, I, I, we would ask that it go forward today. They've met all the requirements. There wasn't any specifics for um, what needed to be done other than what are you going to do with this area. And, it's just going to be an open plan. We received an email from, or not we, the engineer received an email from Mr. Lawson um, specifically mentioning that the um, had to be an open, um, the permit had to be received from the mayor and alderman um, and that we don't believe that's the purview of this of this board that would be, um, we would apply to them once the project is approved. Um, now this board can put some stipulations on, on that and say that we give a recommendation as long as it meets this requirement, but this is a two-month delay of a project that we don't think is necessary, um, and it is, uh, it's just not proper um, to do that at this time. 
Comment? Yes. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I believe one of the major concerns from the board that we met last time was how was this open space to be maintained? Mm -hmm. right, Who would right. maintain it? What's it going to be? How would it be maintained? And until that plan is submitted, I recommend uh, we follow the recommendation of the board and postpone it at least until we receive that plan. Mr. Washington, may I ask a question just for my own understanding? Are not the zoning ordinances of this city the purview of the Planning Commission? Yes, but in this particular case, this would go to the Board of Mayor and Alderman ultimately with a recommendation from the Planning Commission. So you must act one way or another with a recommendation before it goes forward to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. And before you make that recommendation, you have the authority to require additional information, as you know, sought to do. And I think, I think the question was, it was more of, you know, what is your plan? It didn't say it had to be in writing. It didn't say it was for. It just said, you know, what do you I, I asked the question, I think, and so did Alderman Noah's, because my, my concern was also, one, how much will the city have to take care of this? Are we going to have to spend money to do that? And my other question was whether it's going to be useful to, well, I didn't know if the, the person who was developing it would actually put in maybe a playground or something so that the actual residents could utilize it, which in my mind um, would be beneficial for those those families. Yeah, and the answer to that question is private property, so this, I mean, he would have to maintain it as any other private owner would have to maintain any property in the city. I mean, that would go for everyone here, just the regular ordinances, and you know, that's how you have to maintain it. I mean, if, if it got out of hand, the, the, I'm sure they would, they would, uh, the codes commission would say this needs to be mowed, this needs to be picked up, or things would, just like you would my house if I didn't know my yard or anybody's, or anybody's house, just, they, he would still own the property. And secondly, I, I, I'm sorry, Aruka, what was your second question of that? Was My other qu question about was... About having a, uh, having a um, playground or something like that. Yeah, in, in my mind, these planned developments are supposed to be something that, um, th that could have things like, whenever I've thought about a planned development, I think about a place that has like, you know, like a coffee shop and then also at the same time, a, a, you know, multiple housing units on it and then other things. In my mind, this is something that families are going to want to go to to rent or to buy. And in my, they, they need something for their kids and something that use that space could actually be utilized. Yeah, I, and I understand that, and I think the answer to that question is, as part of a, an economic decision or a private developer decision, that's not going to be done, and that's again not something that the the city should get involved in to the level of planning down to the specifics of what every you know everything that they're going to put in there. As long as it meets the, the requirements, which it did through the technical review committee of, you know, the safety standards and all that thing, all those things, getting down to those details and delaying projects in order until it meets specifically what uh, the board may or may not want is not um, is not what the, the board is here for. Um, and I understand those concerns um, and those things, and they may make sense to do. And one developer may want to do it one way, and one may want to do it other, and things like that. Um, but we just don't believe that that's uh, something that should delay the project, um, that we've met all the requirements, um, and that it should go forward for a vote. If, if and then it should go forward with a vote, even with a caveat, like I think Mr. Worsham just said, you can approve it with, with a caveat. And, and I guess that's my question for Mr. Worsham and for, for Lee, is that I thought that with the planned developments that we could actually get into more of the nitty gritty of what that looks like. Yeah, you've got you've, what it is. It's a, uh, kind of a balancing act where you're allowing somebody to build something in a district that would normally not be allowed. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can leverage that with the planning unit development to ask for amenities. That's that's what I thought we were doing in this case. You have that option. I, I think I think you do have that option up to a point, but whenever you have a because uh, you this could go on eternally because if you have. Um, you say these are the requirements, this is what we want, the developer meets those requirements and then puts it forward in front of the board and the board thinks of a new requirement that they want. I think that that decision would have to be made on the front end before the plans and everything are submitted, is my argument, that, because then you could just keep moving the goalposts forever. Um, and I know that the developer is getting a benefit with the PUD in building something that is not supposed to be there. And there is a trade-off, I understand that. But if you don't know that on the front end, it, 
it's impossible to hire engineers and surveyors to plan for something that if the goalpost is going to get moved and every time we come up there's another requirement. So I think it would put in the future uh, or things like that that that's uh, a real concern that that should be uh, put in at the beginning. But then if we well, approve it, doesn't it put us in a situation where it sets precedent that we've approved it and then... No, because you just said you have the ability to change but they're, they're really, you're asking for something. So you can, yes, somebody would make the argument, well, you did it for this guy, why wouldn't you do it for me? Um, but that's what you just, you just stated. You have the ability to do that on the front end, not moving the ball for developers whenever they're um, toward, the, toward the end. And that's, that's the argument I would make. And we are on the front end, but I would point out that <clears throat> when I get to the zoning ordinance, and I haven't found the number on it yet. Oh, I'm going to look right here and see if it gives me the number. Uh, it doesn't, just says planning considerations. But there is a notation on element 10. The site, uh, element 10 states the site plan indicates the applicant will preserve 2.68 acres of open space in the rear portion of the lot, zoning ordinance section 902E. Um, and it goes on to talk about preservation and maintenance and all of that. And it states in segment B, creating a permanent open space easement on and over the said private open spaces to guarantee that the open space remains perpetually in recreational use with ownership and maintenance being the responsibility of an owner's association which you don't have because you have only one owner. So you've got an owner's association with one owner then. With articles of association and bylaws. Articles and associate and association of association and bylaws, which are satisfactory to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. That's why you're taking it to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. But in those bylaws should be spelled out what that property is going to be done with, what's going to happen to it. It should be in writing, and it should come through here. That's why we're saying that we should have seen the plan here tonight. You should have presented it through the bylaws of your, of your uh, owner's association. Well, I, I would respond in two ways. One, like you just said, a one, one owner homeowner association, it's pretty easy to win a vote to change those bylaws because he would have the ability to do um, what he what he wanted with that. But it obviously would be subject to the zoning uh, regulations uh, and general maintenance that everyone is is subject to. Um, my, we would just submit that this delay is unnecessary and that it would make more sense to move the project forward with the caveat that that be submitted um, and it has to pass pass the mayor uh, and alderman, the board mayor and alderman has to pass that anyway. Um, and that um, I don't, I guess I don't understand um, if you did submit a written plan other than it's going to be open space, there's going to be nothing built there. It's just going to be space. It's going to be what it is now there. Well, no, you would be stating that it's going to be open space that you are going or that the owner is going to maintain. As an open space in a recreational type environment, so right? And I don't mean to be argumentative, but that's kind of that, that's a given. That's what you would have to get to get it zoned that way. And if, if you it ain't written that, down, it never happens, sir. Well, that's what a zoning <laughs> ordinance would do, I, I believe. So. But that would be our suggestion. Um, and having any, I think uh, there's some other uh, citizens here to speak about that. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, in our last meeting, we uh, asked for two actions. One was for that plan, the other one for the letter to be sent out to the neighbors, mm -hmm. inviting them to a public hearing. We've, we've heard from the uh, developer, good bad, good, bad, and different. We've heard from him. I think we now should move and hear from the, from the, uh, from the neighbors or, or in the public hearing. I don't disagree. Please Hi, approach. <laughs> My name is Jacqueline Parks. I live at 117 Reagan Street. I'm on the back parcel of this open space we're discussing. Um, and I think that is a very vague term. And I think you're right to ask that we be clarified on that. 
Is it going to stay wooded? Is it going to be developed into a playground? If it is developed in any way, are we going to handle the already existing flooding issues from that property that myself, my neighbor at 115, and several other neighbors on the back side of Cambridge deal with? Um, the other aspect of that is I would like to know if the planning committee has any way of maintaining whether or not that's going to stay what, what income level those rentals are going to stay. I know I've just spent about $160,000 renovating a house over there. I don't really want Section 8 behind me for quite clear reasons. My backyard is open to that entire property. And that's a bit of an issue for me in what's supposed to be a low density residential area. So that's really all I have to say on that. Yes, sir. My name is Charles Dennis, 112 Stone Boulevard has been my home since 1954 when my mother and father built that. I now have my daughter living in that home after my mother's death. So we are really rooted at 112 Stone Boulevard. We have bought those side property. Part of, and I did not see the plat until tonight, part of those houses will be uh, directly behind us. I was, going to, I was concerned at first that there would be two-story. I found out tonight they're single-story. Very pleasing to me. The way they face the street will look like housing rather than apartments. But I too will tell you there is flooding back there because as a kid, I played in that swamp when it rained heavy and we caught toads and frogs and occasionally a snake. The big concern I have on this is what I used to call Cumberland Springs, which is now West Lincoln, is a racetrack. It's not a street or a road. Be there some morning at 8 o'clock. Be there some afternoon at 4. From Cedar Lane out to the city limits, it's a straight shot. And people are in a hurry to get to and from work. I don't know how or what the city could do. I don't think there's room for turn lanes in or out of this property. But it is something I think as you look, according to the national census, every home owns 1.62 cars, which is two cars. So you've got 13 units, you've got 26 cars, you've got one way in and one way out. And that road is very busy. They're going to be tied up and they're going to tie up some of the time for the others. Other than that, I can only say I hope they are good neighbors. <coughs> and I'm sure they will be. But if this property is going to be rezoned throughout as an R2 for a bud, why, if some of it's going to be left open, couldn't part of it be zoned R2 and the other stay R1? Thank you. Hi, I'm Kenny Sadler, uh, 290 Interstate Drive, Manchester, uh, Tennessee. And I'm the engineer for the project, and I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, now or later if there are other comments. But uh, the open space uh, is a requirement of the PUD. And, um, you know, opinions are going to vary on what the open space is or would need to be. And I understand. Uh, the Planning Commission's position that a playground would be nice and, and other things would be nice. However, if I were the owner, uh, like this lady that just got up and spoke, I don't know that I would want all the families there to be able to come back to my corner of where my house is. You know, this property is roughly a thousand feet deep. Uh, I did discuss with Mr. Lawson, uh, you know, trying to get from after after it was deferred, you know, sending emails, and I think he was sending emails trying to get some clarification on exactly what the Planning Commission's desire was on the open space because Mr. Denby's desire was to leave it as is. It is a, a low area. Uh, there are drainage issues there. That's why we have avoided it. All the drainage for this development goes out to the street. It has a detention area that, that uh, passes the two year through the hundred year storm event. So we have avoided the back area and kept all the growth around the perimeters 
so that there would be built-in privacy in addition to the screening that we've done, uh, which is well beyond probably twice as much as what would be required for the city of Tullahoma. So uh, an open space, uh, and the residents are here tonight, I mean, I don't know that, that they're gonna want someone to come in and clear out all this, uh, this natural growth uh, that is going to promote more activity going on behind their houses. If I were a resident there, I would not want that. So I do understand your your concern, but I, I'm just not sure I would want that if I were the person that, that lived there. So Mr. Denby's approach had been uh, to leave it as is, leave as much of the natural vegetation around the, the property as, as uh, he could. And uh, so, I mean, as far as a plan, you know, to present, uh, he doesn't have a plan to present because he wants to leave it as is. For those reasons, it is it is a low area. Uh, you know, again, all the drainage has been taken to the street to avoid any more drainage, and we're exceeding that. You know, we've uh, we have improved the drainage uh, on here, the landscaping, the position of the buildings, uh, the finishes of the building. You know, it's all brick and rock. Uh, architectural shingle. I mean, it's it's very nice units that Mr. Denby is proposing here. So um, he's not trying to get out of anything. He's just not wanting to to do anything with the open space other than be what it is, which is open space. But uh, but I don't know if the residents would want all that cleared out, you know, uh, or not. Honestly, I just uh, but it's. Uh, it's a low-lying area with uh, with the natural vegetation around it as it is, and that was his desire was to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Sure. Anyone else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you mentioned water. Name. Uh, I'm, name. On one, I'm name. Jerry Sperling. I live at 108 Hamilton Lane. Uh, all the water out of Reagan Street and out of that swamp drains in front of my house. Uh, I built a bridge across the drainage uh, creek, ditch. Uh, I tried tubes and they washed out. So uh, right now water is coming over my bridge after they built the subdivision up behind us to the uh, west of uh, Hamilton Lane. We drained that also and they put in a drainage uh, sump. So uh, I guess what the engineer is saying that uh, there's no additional water going to uh, flow east on West Lincoln to Hamilton Lane. In other words, they're, they're paving over a, a large section of now, which is just uh, grass and soil. So that's my question. Will additional water be coming down Hamilton Lane? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I answer that? Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, again, the detention area that's provided is, is on the street. All the development that we're proposing here would drain to the front. So we have, uh, we have brought all the buildings, all the parking lot areas to the front. Uh, again, that detention pond that's designed exceeds the the tele, you know, Tullahoma requirements, mm -hmm. and it does pass the two-year through 100-year storm event uh, for the detention. So there would be no increase in storm water uh, as a result of the development. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Daniel Berry, 132 Linda Lane, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, this is the kind of development I think that we need here. We do need good units, uh, people to live in that aren't uh, low income housing. I guess my questions would be for you to think about those um, and maybe the answers. Are there any ordinances that this does not meet? And are we kind of debating here over just preferences of what we'd like in here uh, versus something that they're failing to do? I think we asked for letters, or you'd asked for letters to the neighbors, which they've done. Um, 
The second thing was the plan for the open space, which they're just going to leave open. Um, and it sounded like from what you read, the rest of the stuff gets passed up to the, the homeowners and charged up like that, it's passed to the board, uh, mayor and alderman for approval. Um, and the, the, I hate seeing this delayed and I hate seeing this kind of thing delayed. Uh, and I'd love to see if you guys, if there's not an ordinance that it's breaking to not hold this up and let it get for the board of mayor and alderman and let them make the decision based on your yes or your no uh, recommendation. Thank you very much. I will try and address that question. Um, while things such as what Rupa mentioned, like playgrounds and things like that, are very nice and, and we like to see things that like that put in, that's a point of personal preference mm -hmm. in a PUD. That's not a requirement. But there is a requirement that if you say, I'm going to leave it as open land as it is now, that you put that in writing. And that be part of the PUD that you're submitting. That's all we ask for. If you want to say, we're going to leave it just like it is right now, then say, we're going to leave it just as it is right now and let it go at that. That's all you had to do. That's all we asked for. Was that not done? Not to us. We were not issued anything that told us that. No, you were issued on the plan. What was required was, what, what's required is, is an open space easement to be recorded. Oh, yeah, the easement to has the to be recorded. You're right that's about the, that. That's yeah. the easement part, but that's really, what it was was there was a, there was the, the condition was that they'd come back with some type of plan and maintenance about, you know, how it's going to be developed and how it's going to be maintained. Yeah, in other words, they're not going to let it overgrow. If they won't right. leave it like it is, okay, but don't let it overgrow. And where in the open space that easement, it would be, it would also spell out that it would be the responsibility of the owner to maintain it as far as keeping it from being a fire hazard or you know, some kind of issue with, with the brush or, but uh, that would be what would be required that needs to be approved by the Board of Mayor and Aldermen reason why we needed at this board meeting is so that you can make a recommendation to the board. So board they know which way See, board. we have to send a, me a recommendation, favorable or unfavorable, to the board of mayor and all. And without knowing that and not having that in the plan, then it's difficult for us to send it to the board of mayor and all of them because if they read it and raise on that board, and so it's Rupa, and they ask, what's the plan for that and we have to say we don't know they're going to send it right back to us and we're going to have to deal with it again i think it's easy to take care of gentlemen i really think it is oh i, I think it is as well chairman my name is eric birch I'm 200 south Woodland street manchester tennessee um <coughs> what i what i think the point is is that you can either approve it or not approve it with give whatever recommendation you wish and you can also make a caveat that they detail how this open space is going to be maintained. But they make that to the, the board of mayor and aldermen is going to have to approve that. So that's why we're asking this commission to take a vote tonight and let us proceed to the board of mayor, mayor and aldermen because ultimately that is who's going to have to approve this open space plan in the end anyway. And at that point, it will be in writing that it will have to be maintained the way it is in its current state. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we've been, this board has been castigated for delaying this project tonight. We've not delayed this project. We asked for specific from the developer and his representatives before we voted on this tonight. We've not received it. We have not delayed it. It's been delayed by, by the owner. So we cannot act on this favorably tonight. We can only act on it unfavorably or postpone it. That's true. It's not, it's not, what we had to have wasn't presented. 
So can I ask a question? Are, are we in that place where we can ask a question? Or well, do we at have this to point. <laughs> so, so my question is, was it presented though by him saying I just don't know what the legal ramifications of whether he's met the, the rules or not. Because we asked for this to be sent to us, but then he's saying, we're going to leave it open. And because it's going to be within the codes, you guys are there to enforce the codes anyways, I'm, I will be abiding by them. Does that suffice for what our, our request was? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, the issue is they're going to have to do the open space easement. There's, there's no escaping that it's in the zoning re zoning ordinances and the regulations so that guarantees the fact that it'll stay undeveloped and that'll go on the plat now yeah that'll be well it'll go on a it'll just be a deed drawn up with an easement it could be described on it or it could be done by plat either way and then that uh it would have to be approved it's a mutual agreement between the developer and of course he's de he's dedicating it to the city so the board of mayor ought to have to accept the dedication so if he's dedicating it to the city, then the city will have to maintain it. No. Okay. No, he's, no, he's only the dedicating the oh, Okay, gotcha. No, okay. We're just, well, the purpose of the easement is to make, make sure that it stays yeah. open space, that it doesn't get sold to a new owner and they, they, use it. they don't understand it and they build on the back. And uh, once we done gave the concessions of allowing this type of development, it normally wouldn't be allowed in that zoning district. It's sort of, so that's the purpose of the you know, the open space easement is to maintain okay. that open space. I'm just making sure that we don't get into any legal issues by delaying it, if that makes sense. Well, bear in mind that the easement is the document that would be prepared and executed after it's finally approved by the Board of Mayor and all. So they can say tonight that they will do that. They will, they will, by easement in the document, properly executed and recorded, dedicate the property for public purposes to the city. You wouldn't do it beforehand because there's no reason to prepare that document unless it's going to be approved. Right. That's true. So any any recommendation that we make will include that the finalization and execution of an easement for public purposes for this problem. So we can say that as a requirement when we in our recommendation to the board of mayor and all. If there are any other issues that want us, it would we just would justify delay, we can delay it for other reasons. What's in question is the, the remainder of the property and how that's being designated. And they're saying they're going to leave it just as it is, just open space like it is right now. And that should be a part of the documentation that would have been presented to us to tell us that's what they're going to do with the property. And then everything would have been done. So that's the only thing we were really missing tonight was that. Could can we put that in the recommendation then when we put a recommendation out there that that has to be put in writing you know well i mean you can, you can put it in your motion when you if you to approve it uh but it's still going to be required no matter if you you put it in there as a condition or not yeah and, and as a matter of clarification uh tonight is the first time that i heard that we didn't have what we needed uh, you know, because again, Lee and I have been communicating, thinking that we were on the same page as far as what the board's desire was for the open space. And Lee and I had both discussed the fact, even up until I guess Wednesday of this week, or, well, we, we or uh, last that. Friday or Thursday, site uh, plan to met the right. requirements. You told me that there would be attorneys that would be representing them. We we bring a documentation of some sort. Uh, that was my assumption. Well, the documentation based on the email, and, yeah, and the direction I got <clears throat> was to be prepared by uh, Mr. Best, and it would go to the uh, to the mayor more Baldwin for approval. That was the direction I got. Is those documents would be required uh, again, uh, like your uh, representative has said. You know these things would have to be approved then you wouldn't do those things prior to having approval to move on from here so i'm just really confused on what exactly uh the open space i mean what you read from mr lawson previously he has it in writing what that space is it's just that the surveyor hasn't Put the easement on to get approved by the mayor and board of aldermen so it can always stay as open space so in my mind i don't see how any anything is deficient 
from the standpoint of the open space. I understand it is a requirement, and I understand Mr. Lawson has put that in writing to you that it is a requirement. So I'm not sure what's uh, what's misleading about that. It was just that uh, the desire was to leave it as is. And, and again, I'm I'm pretty sure the residents would probably rather have it like it is than to have that area developed as a part of uh, you know activities for the residents that live there. But uh, and 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 my point is whatever you do with it as long as it's legal totally legal whatever you do is fine with me right i just want you to tell me that's what you're going to do yeah with well, open space to remain as is and would have to meet every ordinance that the city of Tullahoma has like everyone else's property would have to meet i mean there's no difference in this and and all i needed was that in writing from someone and we would we would be done not to be argumentative, but I don't know why we would need to put in the writing something we already have to do. We have to follow, the open space is a legal definition. We have to keep up with that definition just like everybody else does. So that's and it's not a problem at all to put it in writing. I think the only thing is the direction I was given was it would need to be put in writing for the mayor and board of aldermen, not for the planning commission. So that was, those, those items but if you think about it, how could we ever forward something to the Board of Mayor and Alderman that was unclear, that we didn't know what was going to be said to them? If I'm going to, if I'm going to send something to the Board of Mayor and Alderman, I better know what it's going to say. Because I don't want someone calling. I got two of the Board of the Alderman sitting right across from me, and they're going to look at me and go, what did you just say we are why did you say this when we didn't hear that and they're going to want to know why i said it when they didn't hear it in this meeting or in writing that's all and it, why is it a hardship to for it to have been presented to us that's I don't think it was a hardship. I don't think there was any exact direction that it had to be made in writing. I think it was a decision by the committee that said we need to hear what this was going to be used for. I, and I was at that last meeting. I didn't watch. I didn't see the exact minutes. I didn't see a, an order that came down that said this must be in writing. I said, what is your plan for the space? It's, and that's the plan for the space. And it's, it's, it's in the plan. It's in the plan. It's in the original plan. It's developable. Open space. So. And, and again, no one was trying to leave anybody out of anything. I thought it was clear that that's open space. The easement, you know, Mr. Bess would do an easement to go with the flat to submit to the Mayor Board of Aldermen. So there was no, uh, there was no motive to try to keep anything from this board, for sure. So it's just to remain as it is. Well, is there anyone else to speak? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing and I'll entertain a motion on this request. Well, move to delay next month until we get in writing as requested. Land use for the undeveloped area. Do I have a second to this motion? I'll second. I have a motion and second to delay a decision on this request until next month, until we can receive in writing that final document that we requested. Uh, any discussion that we need to take. But doesn't that suffice for that at this point, or no? It's not in writing. But it is in the minutes. Right? And then. I mean, would you prefer to hear from Mr. Denby, the owner himself? No, we do. We we just ask it to be put in writing in the in the documents that we would be presenting to the board of mayor and aldermen. That's all. 
like him to write something today that he will promise to maintain this as huh? it is? Close the public hearing. I've closed the public hearing. Yes. You have a motion. Yeah. You have a motion. yeah. And we motion. have this, and we have a discussion here, right? And we're having discussion here. So that's my question: Is does that? I just don't want us to be delaying something, get into a situation where we get hit with a lawsuit for delaying inappropriately. Does that make sense? Yes. And is that feasible in this situation that that could be happening? Okay. No. It's a plan unit development. It's not like a use by right. Like the, you know, like if somebody was to come in here and build like twelve houses and put in a subdivision where it would be a use by right. Okay. This is a plan unit development, so no. And is this sufficient though that we have it in the minutes that he has said and his lawyers have said that he's planning on that would be up to the board. Uh, no, we uh, I'm sorry, the public hearing closed. So we're in discussion here now. If you want something, you got to tell people what you want, man. Okay, so I have a motion in second to postpone. Any other discussion? Then I'll call the question. Those in favor of postponing until we receive in writing the uh, the information on the plan use of the undeveloped land uh, at the back of the property. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, um, considering everything, let's have a roll call just to be sure. Okay. Mr. Comer, your no. vote. Sir? No. no. Aye. Aye. I vote aye. You vote aye. No. No. So it's three to two. So the motion carries. And it is postponed until we receive in writing. All right? So ordered. Thank you. Can you use a cocktail? Can you use a cocktail right now? <laughs> Feed the baby first, then do that. <laughs> Feed the baby first, then do that. <laughs> all right, all right. The next, the next subject on the list Thanks. <laughs> will be um, new business, the subdivision plats. This will be a public hearing on the Denby Shelton. Come to order, please. Come to order, please. This will be on the subdivision, the Denby Shelton Crest Drive Minor Subdivision Plat. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Lee, will you please explain? It's a residential subdivision, uh, three lots. Crest Drive uh, meets the uh, all the subdivision regulations and uh, statutes in favorable recommendation. What pages are we on? This page will be 30. on pages 31, 31 okay. through 37. Seven thirty-eight. Great. Yes, through thirty-eight. <clears throat> this will, again will be a public hearing. Uh, all the rules, as explained before, still apply. So, um, with that, I will open the public hearing for comment. Hello, Andy. Hello, my name is Andy Best. Three fifty-five, two seven three Haines Hollow Road. Winchester, Tennessee. I'm the uh, surveyor on this project. Um, I, was, I was asked to uh, subdivide or uh, put a plan out to subdivide this property on Crest Drive. Uh, this is over um, off of East Lincoln Street. Um, uh, this is a uh, Highland Drive area, Anderson's Drive area. Uh, it's it's back in the back. It's uh, it fronts up to um, the, the property is it's mostly flood zone. It, it has some 
uh, some edges on, near the, the railroad tracks, and then you got Highway 55 on the other side of the tracks. Um, what we're doing is I, I was asked to, uh, to, to determine the area of the property that was outside of the flood zone and then subdivide that area, and, and that's what we were doing. And, uh, we went out and mapped that flood zone on the ground uh, and now uh, determined what, what kind of land we had to deal with and uh, subdivide it from there. In the, okay, Andy, can I ask, uh, on the map that I see on page 30, 36 here, the dotted red line is the flood zone, am okay, I right? Uh, yes, um, I believe on the, you're probably looking at a copy of this right here that I have. Uh, there's, there are two lines on there that are kind of a red hue. There's a dotted red line, that is the scaled line off of the female flood panel. Uh -huh. uh, the female flood panel also designates a base flood elevation, which uh, uh, the FEMA has, has used models to calculate where the water will come to when it comes to a 100-year flood, and they've determined that there's a certain elevation, a mean sea level elevation, that the water would come to. So uh, in determining a flood zone or a flood boundary, there are two ways to do so. There's map that elevation on the ground or scale that line off of a plan, a, 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 a drawing that's put out by FEMA. Uh, in this case, I've shown both. Uh, the, the dashed line is the scaled line from the FEMA firm panel, and the other reddish line is the actual um, elevation mapped on the ground in the field. Okay, thank you. Sure. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this issue? Seeing no one else to speak to this issue, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. I move to approve. Second. I have a motion and second to approve this request for the subdivision. Or is this a favorable recommendation? No, this is subdivision. So. To approve the request for the subdivision of this parcel. Um, do we have any discussion from the panel? Hearing none, we'll call a question. All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Approval is given. Okay, next up on the list. Powell Road, minor subdivision, final flat. It's, uh, it's in the urban growth boundary on Powell Road. It's uh, 5.23 acres being uh, divided into two lots. Uh, meets all requirements for the city as far as subdivision regulations and the zoning regulations of this county. Uh, staff gives it a favorable recommendation. Are you the surveyor or the yes. owner? Yes, Chris Bateman, 521 Woodley Road, Tullahoma, Tennessee. I'm the surveyor on this property and the next one. And this was a piece of property that came off a, track, a large tract of land that was auctioned off about two or three months ago. And the new owner is asked to subdivide this property. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone else wishing to speak to this issue? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and second to approve this uh, request for the Duffy Buchanan and Powell Road Minor Subdivision. Any discussion from the panel? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Carries. Uh, next is the S Southern Buildings Minor Subdivision. Yeah, this one's just like right down the road or right adjacent to the subdivision we just reviewed. It's in the urban growth boundary. It's 7.5 acres. It uh, mm -hmm. will be divided in... I believe four lots, yeah, four lots, uh, meets the requirements of the subdivision regulations and the zoning regulations of the county, and staff gives it a favorable recommendation. 
It's at the corner of Powell and, and Greenwood, I believe. Greenwood Road. Okay, this is another public hearing. I will open this hearing for comments from the public. Chris you can see from Platt how he wanted to divide this property. And everything looks good. Everything has access to the road. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this issue? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. You entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and second to approve this request for subdivision on uh, the Southern Buildings Minor Subdivision Final Plat. Any discussion from the panel? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Ah, next up, surplus property request. This is a recommendation in this case. On, uh, directly in front of 114 South Maple Street. Uh, the lot is like 12 square feet short of being a buildable lot for the zoning ordinance. So the applicant is asking for about three inches that goes along the front of their property, which would be a little bit over 12 square feet. They would be able to pull a building permit once it got, you know, if it was able to get the 12 square feet. And the, uh, the right of way right now is 60 feet for South Maple, and the minimum uh, right of way width, as per the major thoroughfare plan, is just 50 feet for for uh, South Maple. So staff gives it a favorable recommendation, uh, except for uh, fire. fire department did not give it a favorable recommendation, but all other agencies that reviewed it did. Was there a justification for their failing to approve? Uh, it wasn't anything related to fire safety. I think it was a, a related to a setting a precedent of, of giving up right of way. Okay. But we have sold right of way before, so that's not something new for us. What about along the, uh, the, the other lots along the way? They're not requesting any? Well, those are all developed. So, the, oh, they're already done. They were done before the size requirements changed, right? And they're slightly bigger. Well, they may, they may meet the size requirement. The minimum size requirement for a single family home in the R2 zoning district is 10,000 square feet. But we have a caveat in the zoning ordinance that if it's an existing lot of record, you can still use it, even though it is less than 10,000 feet, but nothing less than 6,000 square feet. I see. So this owner is just trying to get his lot size up to 6,000 square feet. Yeah. The, I, I can, this is for discussion, but an issue there is, I mean, it'll be a public auction. The neighbor could buy the land and prevent that owner from building. We could put a condition on the, on who could actually bid on the, on the, the surplus property. How can we do that? It's, uh, we, the, the provisions in our surplus property ordinance allow us to create any conditions we deem appropriate when we surplus property. But that's done by the Board of Mayor and Alderman, right? Department. That is done but by... You, well, yeah, but th th this is just a recommendation here, so I mean, you would recommend it, you know, with, you could recommend it with the condition that that uh, that only the adjacent property owner is allowed to bid on it. Yeah, it, but that's the adjacent property owners that I'm thinking about. No, he, there's only adjacent one adjacent being the guy that wants across the front. Only one adjacent no, property. Two. No, there's no. across the front. No, no. it's across the front of his property. He's only asking for enough to go across the front of his property. Yeah, not the yeah but I'm thinking that an adjacent property owner could... They, they wouldn't be adjacent at this time, 
And adjacent. once he got the he got the three inches, he, they might be considered adjacent. But right now they're flush together, so it's going straight out from his property line, his property pins out into the right of way. So he, we would be the only what, adjacent property owner. What, what caveat would we put on this when we put it up for surplus auction? It would be only only adjacent property owners could bid on it. And who would that be? The one, one guy that owns own. that piece of property. That's the only one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We uh. Since we own it fee simple, I mean, it's, it's not a big. Why do we? Why do we give it to him? <laughs> so, well, I mean, save some money. We can't give away public property. It's not Three no. inches. Okay. Three inches. <laughs> this is uh, honestly, Miss Moody and I and Mr. Walton discussed. This is just for the purpose of making this property buildable. Get it on the tax rolls once there's a, a dwelling. Steve, is, is there a minimum bid on the public? I think we're answering we all your questions, Andy. Take it easy. <laughs> so otherwise, he could get it for nothing. He bids a penny for it, and he gets it. <laughs> Andy. I have one comment I'd like to make. I actually did the survey on this lot. Uh, in the process of it, uh, uh, we determined, you know, Mr. Curl, we'll back up. Mr. Curl purchased the lot two years ago. The zoning code changed between the time that he bought the property and tried to pull the permit. The zoning code changed require making this lot an unbuildable lot. Um, this lot has been of record as a buildable lot in the city of Tullahoma since 1943. I went back in the chain of title and found when this lot was created. It is my opinion that this is unfair for Mr. Curl that he has purchased a lot that is unbuildable because a code has changed, and yeah. that's why they're requesting yeah. this surplus of life. Yeah. I don't think we disagree. <laughs> yeah. so since we can't give it to him, I move we approve. Second. <laughs> I have a motion and second that uh, we send a favorable recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Do you wish to attach the caveat that only the adjacent uh, owner may bid on the property? That's really not within the purview of the Planning Commission, so I'd suggest you just have to work with that decision. With a favorable recommendation. All right, very good. So I have a motion and second to send a favorable recommendation to the Board of Mayor and all. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. There are none. It passes. Uh, municipal codes amendments. This is a public hearing. Street, curb, and sidewalk standard ordinances. This is again in the urban growth boundary, Lee. Well, no, this is for the city's uh, street development standards, but uh, there's a little more to it. But it's it's removing the requirement for it to our street standards to be enforced out in the urban growth boundary. So it would just be the, the county's street standards. But there's a couple more items in there. Uh, be a, clarifications. <laughs> Mr. Taylor. Uh, there was some. Uh, Yes, this is a public hearing. I'm sorry, this is a public hearing, so therefore all the rules apply, and I will open the hearing. Mr. Taylor. Robert Taylor, 322 Marks Avenue. I'm the Public Works Director for the City of Tullahoma. These text amendments just cleans up some things that uh, we found that need to be tidied up and cleaned up a little bit. Uh, it's basically what this is. Are we approving this or are we making a recommendation? Recommendation. recommendation. I, I move we give a favorable recommendation. Second. Uh, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. I haven't closed the public hearing yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Anybody else to talk on this issue? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. I move we give a favorable recommendation. Second. I'm in. I have a motion and second that we give a favorable recommendation to the uh, changes to the uh, sidewalks and other requirements on here. Any discussion from the 
panel. Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. And with that, we have no other new business. Uh, I'm going to announce that uh, we're going to have to start doing scheduling training. So they raise their four oh, yeah. hours in before New Year's. Uh, I'm suggesting maybe we schedule like two hours next month and then two hours in December so we're not stuck somewhere for four hours. So just a suggestion. Works for me now. Sounds good. We need to make sure that our two newest yeah, uh, members are yeah. brought We've got one that was already them. eligible to, to serve tonight, but they were out of town. And then uh, uh, Mrs. Smith, who will be taking your uh, seat, Scott, uh, she's not eligible until after this meeting to attend any meetings. So, you know, so we'll, we will be uh, there. We have full strength and uh, full membership. I've seen their name somewhere. I remember their song. And just so everyone knows, uh, we withheld the voting on the new officers for this board plan for this month because we didn't have a full downtown. commission yeah, here to vote, so, and we don't so, have a chance for everybody yeah. to vote. Randy Smith's so, daughter. Yeah. All right. I entertain entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. A motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Do we have aye. to? <laughs> we don't have to anymore, right? Don't we have to not do that? No, <laughs> we have to. <laughs> do we have All to All those adjourn? opposed, no. No opposition. We are adjourned. <laughs>